Can you feel it? See it? Hear it today? If you can't, then it doesn't matter anyway. You will never understand it because it happens so fast. It feels so good. It's like bucket of glass. It's so cool. It's so hip. It's a ride. It's so groovy. It's out of sight. You can touch it. Smell it. Tastes so sweet, but it makes no difference because it licks you with your feet. You want it all, but you can't have it. It's in your face, but you can't grab it. <laughs> Pussy. I have a life. Every morning I get up and put on old shitty television, take a shower in my sink, start cooking dinner in the bathroom. Pour the baked beans down the sink. That's maybe why I enjoy the comedic stylings of one Matt groaning, groaning through his his dead Bart. <coughs> I am unique, like a fork with three prongs or a crooked bicycle wheel that forces you to do unique kickflips with yourself naked in the garage. Ask your father. He knows all about that. As for that, that, that... <sighs> Quote, dead bard, unquote. Well, you know what they say. Rome wasn't built for the gays. It takes a lot of time and effort and elbow grease. And that's how about putting grease on my elbows to understand the genius, the quality, the prestige, the importance of Matt Groening's word gun society. The Freemason would often enter my garage and read through old newspapers and receipts for a tonsillectomy I'd gotten 20 years ago and finally I had enough and threw him in the garbage. I put him in the garbage, a man. Man, Matt Grading. I was an intern for Les Simpsons from 1995 through 1997, and I don't mean the year. See, Matt used to walk around the Simpsons office and place sticky notes numbered from 1 through 2,000, and in each room he'd place candy, a highly stylized drawing of Homer Simpson, or various pretzels laced with sedatives to knock out cast members so he could leave their bodies in the lounge rooms with their heads shaved and their bodies in funny positions, mind you. He was an eccentric guy, to say the least. In my first day at the office, I had to walk... A long way to reach room 1995 to find a delicious Twix candy bar attached to a string and a cardboard cutout of Bart Simpson with a man's lips poking out from the front of it. Cowabunga, dude. He started pulling the candy bar, leading me over to the window. I'm Bart Simpson, the man said. Don't have a cow, man. It was supposed to be Cowman with a cow, cow, man, but he said Cowman. It was bad grammar for an employee. I started walking through the window, and he pulled the candy bar away at the last minute, forcing me to fall out the window. <laughs> now, keep in mind, this was a 10-story building in 1800 through 2000. We're good 100 feet from the ground. I fell screaming as I saw the man behind the cardboard cutout. It was Matt! Matt Groening was smiling, or maybe it was just someone who looked like Matt Groening. He had a tape recording, and he was recording my groans of pain from my broken pelvis. Ow! I heaved, and he said, Ow! As if to mock me, shook the Bart Simpson cutout and vanished in the studio. Oh, another prank by Matt Groening. After I got out of the hospital, I went into the lunchroom to enjoy my lunch of very spicy tacos that I ate almost every day. Keep in mind, this was 1997, the year, and tacos that spicy were considered borderline illegal due to human rights spice violation laws at the time. But these were even spicier. I found the bag ripped and something was sprinkled in there. There was a Homer Simpson mug in the lunchroom, and it looked like the eye was moving, like there was a cameraman in there someone watching me i turned the mug 180 degrees to force homer to face the unwashed dishes simpsons employees were forced by fox to wash their own dishes and if we refused they'd fine us up to 300 dollars for each soiled plate i heard someone stumbling around and coughing in the other room as i turned the mug and someone mumbled pour the homer simpson mug back around your faggot it sounded like matt graining i mean i mean cigarette your pants are in the lost and found 
I hadn't seen Matt yet. He was an enigmatic figure who hid in the shadows. The fat man in a Hawaiian t-shirt came in with a Bart Simpson mask on, came in, began eating a ham sandwich. Except he had the mask on, so he wasn't actually chewing the sandwich. He just pushed the ham sandwich into the mask and mumbled, Onomatopoeia, by coughing the words, Delicious ham, <coughs> under his breath would smell slightly of alcohol. Anyway. The tacos? The tacos were too spicy. I fell over coughing, screaming as the man in the Bart Simpson mask danced around me. Too spicy. I'm... <coughs> I coughed. <coughs> <laughs> Shit, my tongue just touched the microphone. I coughed and wheezed the hot taco chunks getting stuck in my throat. I was choking on these tacos because they were too spicy. Someone came in and began to draw me. My head was shaved to resemble yellow spike tips, and they began painting my body lemon and gold. Shades of a banana. The animators were very serious about sketching me while I was crying. <laughs> Choking on a taco! Oh, I rolled over on my side. They drew me in the fetal position. Taco crumbs surrounding my body. A taco womb, if you will. And my Freudian father, the creator, Matt Groening. Giver of life. I woke up strapped to a table as they... Surgically injected silicon into my skin. Oh, boy. They, they, um... Well, there's only one way to say this. They were giving me breast implants. Help! I screamed. What if Bart was the transgender? Matt Groening laughed. What if Bart was a transgender? I screamed, coughed, <coughs> kicked, wheezed, Workers are going home until the man finally removed his Bart Simpson mask. Revealing! Oh, yeah. It was Matt Groening, creator of The Simpsons. He was recording my screams! And the animators were animating them! And then he picked me up with godlike strength of some kind of Samson of cartoon sitcoms and threw me out the window into a shallow grave. He was laughing as I saw a tombstone for a man named Bart Simpson. A plastic, shitty Halloween tombstone and all the other tombstones of previous workers in a neat row. I'm not Bart Simpson! I screamed. I am Intern Man! Um, you know... Wish fulfillment. The breast implants were surgically implanted into my elbow, back, and spine, so the shallow grave was actually quite comfortable. I woke up at home covered in dirt, but otherwise unscathed. Was this a dream? Yeah, I received a terse letter from Fox informing me my internship would be abruptly terminated, pending an investigation into my dirtying of the employee lunchroom. And the VHS was there. Dead Bart? What on earth? I put it in and they were lowering Bart into a coffin and those screams, those screams sounded so familiar. If only we were all so lucky. I decided to go to bed and there was an owl outside my window. Highly realistic owl. This part of California, this time of year, holding what looked like a dart gun. I walked over to the window and the owl smiled and... I know what you're thinking. How can an owl smile? Well, this owl smiled and I... saw it lick its lips. Bed dart, the owl whispered, speaking perfect English. Then it shot me in the head. 
They fell unconscious and woke up in a different country with a different name, different family. It didn't even look like me. Strange Hispanic features. In short, I was now a Hispanic immigrant. I tried entering America, but they kept deporting me, and for some reason I was speaking English, but all the words came out as Spanglish, and combination of Spanish and English. Hey, caramba! I screamed, which was Spanish for, oh, caramba. Matt Groening sprouted in the wings of an owl, and... Flew off into the sunset. George Letson. <laughs>